so um, let's let's do a recap of what we have been doing so far just like it happens in big bang theory uh, so we studied barrier method for inequality constraint where xk was in the argument of x in the set x f of x plus epsilon k b of x where the barrier function was defined using the constraints inequality constraints of the original optimization problem then we studied augmented Lagrangian method where xk was in the argument of x in capital X L C k x lambda k and you wanted c k to be large so c k goes to infinity and lambda k converges to some value ok you can also take lambda k as constant and just keep increasing the value of c k or you can take lambda k close to lambda star and c k uh, can be any positive like sufficiently large positive in uh, positive number so that was augmented Lagrangian then we studied method of multipliers in which we said well it is the same as augmented Lagrangian but now my lambda k plus 1 will be equals to lambda k k h x k ok. So, this is the way to update the Lagrange multiplier at every point of time. So, this was for inequality constraint problem, uh, this is for equality constraint problem, this is for equality constraint problems and then uh, we studied sequential quadratic programming in the last two classes in the last week and there I forgot what the idea was no I remember the idea is to pick d k in argument of gradient f x k transpose d plus half d transpose h k d plus c c where x where d is in r n and c is greater than equal to 0 c is also in r n and the constraint was ok for all j. And this was also for this was for both equality and inequality constraint problems. So, that was sequential quadratic programming. Now, the idea is that we have seen a lot of these optimi oh with d k you have to update x k plus 1 as x k plus alpha k d k. Okay. And what we have seen so far is that this x k converges to x star, this x k converges to x star, this lambda k converges to lambda star and in this case x k converges to x star okay. under, under some conditions and so on uh, we can prove these results. Now, let us say I I come up with some sort of update scheme just out of the blue and I want to prove that if I go through those iterations it will converge to the optimal solution. So, let us give you a let me give you an example let us say so this is a new method which is called first order Lagrangian method ok and the idea is as follows I say that let us do the following update
okay you woke up a morning and you thought you know we have been trying to come up with different methods let's try the simplest method possible which is this method uh, and let's see if it converges to the optimal point or not how do you go about proving it so the question is how to prove remember the proofs for convergence of all these results requires quite a bit of work okay and they are all completely different there is no one single theorem or single result that you could just use from your arsenal you pick up you pick this specific result and then you apply to all these problems and prove that well they converge to the optimal point okay uh there is no single theorem that proves all those results that all those algorithms converge to the optimal point so somebody came up with this method let's say okay and that person wants to prove that this method would converge to the optimal point so the question is how do you prove how to prove that xk lambda k converges to x star lambda star what would you what would you do you can make an intuitive argument here that this approach is trying to get closer to the point where the gradient of l with respect to x is going to zero because it looks like a gradient descent for proving uh, for getting the gradient of x of l equal to zero and this i don't even know what this is trying to do it's probably trying to mimic the method of multipliers but remember here we use ck but now i'm just using a value of alpha okay it's not equal to ck it is not tied to ck in any manner and in fact this is also not an augmented lagrangian this is just a pure lagrangian not an augmented lagrangian and this is just some value alpha that i pulled out of my hat okay so what exactly am i trying to do here how do i prove that this would converge or will not converge to the point x star lambda star some ideas i am looking for ideas can someone tell me how would you go about doing it proving this result no no ideas let's try idea number 1 or let, let let's not write it as answer find a penalty function for which is a descent direction okay so let's try with a very naive idea that will come up with a penalty function remember we had come up with several penalty functions here so let's for this particular problem as well let's come up with a penalty function for which this vector oh there should be a negative sign here this vector is a descent direction okay what's the candidate penalty function for that to be a descent direction and and more importantly what should the what should the optimal point of this penalty function should satisfy what should that penal what should that penalty function satisfy or the minimum of that penalty function satisfy that's also an important question what should be my p of x comma lambda equal to any thoughts you see what i am doing i am coming up with a with an iteration okay and i want to prove that well you know if i go through this iteration i see in simulation that it converges to the optimal point 
But I want to prove it. I want to prove that this method would work generally for any arbitrary problem that you might give me. Okay. And so if I want to prove it, the first idea that I get or the first idea that you should get now at this point of time in the class is to try to come up with a penalty function so that you can prove that this direction, remember this can be written as xk plus 1 lambda k plus 1 equals xk lambda k plus alpha minus gradient x of l and h. Right? So I have to prove that this is a descent direction for a penalty function p of x comma lambda. So if this is the descent direction, that it'll, then it will converge, this iteration would converge to the minimum point of this penalty function. And hopefully, that minimum point would also be the minimum to the original optimization problem. Okay, that's what our hope is. So the first step in order to in order to solve this problem or in order to prove that this would indeed hold true, I need to come up with a penalty function. Okay? So let's try a naive penalty function where I square both these quantities. Okay? So I pick okay, I pick this as penalty function. You can come up with your own penalty function, okay, as long as you can prove that this is a descent direction. Uh, note that we have seen this penalty function earlier and we have showed that if x is a local maximum and lambda is the corresponding Lagrange multiplier, then x, p of x comma lambda is a minimum point, sorry, x comma lambda is a minimum point for p of x comma lambda. So, so we definitely are going to fail in the second part where we have to prove that a minimum of this penalty function would actually correspond to the minimum of the original problem. Okay, that part we are going to fail. But nonetheless, let's look at this first part where I have to prove that this is a descent direction for this particular penalty function. So we can prove that under certain conditions and let's see what that is. So what is gradient of p x comma lambda? Let me multiply this by half. So I don't have to keep track of two. So gradient of P is given by, I'm going to suppress all the, all the variables so as to make it compact. Okay, this is what the gradient of p x comma lambda looks like. And this is my descent, my d. Okay, that's my direction d. How do I prove that it's a descent direction? All I need to show is that gradient of p, so d transpose gradient of p is less than 0, right? That's all. So d is a descent direction. Right? We all know this, right? If d transpose gradient of p is strictly less than 0. By the way, this is gradient with respect to lambda, and this is gradient with respect to x. So let's do a d transpose gradient of p. What is this equal to? Minus No. 
Okay, any questions so far? Yeah. Correct. And now you're proving that we are descending. Right. We are descending for this penalty function, not for the original problem. Okay. We are descending for this penalty function, not for the original problem. In the original problem, we might just be converging to a maximum. We don't know yet. Okay. And so if you want to justify it in your head, let's assume that the problem is convex. Okay. So a descent of this penalty is also a descent of the original in the original space, if it is a convex function, because there are no local maximum uh, if it's a convex function. Okay, so my D transpose gradient of P turns out to be this ugly looking expression. And is there any cancellation here? No? Yes? Can't say? Is there any cancellation? So what is this term? This is H transpose, gradient of H transpose, gradient of X with respect of L. And this is the same term, but the transpose. So, so this term is the transpose of this term with a negative sign. Okay. What is this term? This is a scalar quantity. Okay. This is a scalar. Remember, D transpose gradient of P is a scalar quantity. So this is a scalar quantity. This is a scalar quantity, but transpose of this with a negative sign, so they cancel each other out. So I'm going to cancel them. So what I'm left with is minus Is this strictly negative? Is this strictly negative? Well, if this is non-zero, and this is strictly positive definite, then this is negative, right? So what I have is, what I have is D transpose gradient of P is less than zero if is not equal to zero and the second derivative of L with respect to X is strictly positive definite. Okay. Remember what was the sufficient condition for uh, optimality? The sufficient condition said that this should be greater than zero along all directions that are first order variations of the constraint uh, curve. Right? If you remember, where do I write? Okay, I'm going to write here. If you recall, the second order sufficient condition was you define V of X star equals the direction D such that gradient of H X star transpose D is equal to zero for all I. And then you said that, well, D transpose second derivative of L D should be positive definite for all D in V X star. Right? So this is the first order variation along the constraint set. And this is the second derivative of the Lagrangian is positive definite along this first order variation. Okay? It may not be positive definite in its entirety. But along these directions, it is positive definite. Okay, D not equal to zero. But here, I am saying something stronger. It has to be positive definite in all directions, no matter what V of X star is. Okay, this has to be positive definite. So, this is not satisfactory. I am not able to prove. Uh, so, first of all. So, so, so what is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, well, I came up with this iteration. I came up with a penalty function. I can show that D is a descent direction for this penalty function as long as the second derivative of L is strictly positive, which is much, much, much stronger 
than what is actually required as a second order sufficient condition, right? So somehow it's not very elegant, you know, you have to make far more assumptions on the original problem in order to prove that xk lambda k would converse to x star lambda star, okay? You have to make stronger assumptions. I don't want to make stronger assumptions. I know that I don't need these stronger assumptions to prove the second order sufficient condition, okay? So we need to come up with a tool with a theorem so that I can guarantee this without assuming too many things, okay, without assuming too many things. That's my goal, okay? And so I'm going to introduce the best weapon in your arsenal, okay? You can prove anything in life with this method, with this, th with this theorem. And it's known as Banach contraction mapping theorem. Okay, I said that the day will come. Okay, when I'll introduce this in the class. So today's class is about the ultimate weapon. Banach contraction mapping theorem. Okay, this, uh, this theorem has far reaching consequences, but we are going to introduce it for the purpose of optimization, even though this is used in differential equations, machine learning, uh, and uh, what else? Many other uh, PDEs, partial differential equations and so on. Okay, so what's the setting? I have X, which is a closed subset of Rn. I have T, which maps X to X. It's continuous. and satisfies the following condition, T of X1 minus T of X2 is less than equal to alpha norm of X1 minus X2. And alpha is in zero comma one. So open interval. So it has to be strictly less than one, and it can be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so zero less than or equal to alpha is strictly less than one. So then T is known as a contraction map. Okay, T is known as a contraction map, and what else do we need to know? And let's consider this equation, xk plus one equals txk. Consider this uh, iteration, xk plus one. So I start from some initial point, x naught, which is in the set, in the closed set, and I consider the sequence generated by repeated uh, application of this map T, contraction map T. The Banach contraction mapping theorem says, xk converges to x star T of X star equals X star, and the fixed point and X star is the unique fixed point of T. Okay, there are three parts of the theorem. The first part says XK converges to X star. The second part says, well, you know what? X star is a fixed point of T. Okay, what is the fixed point of T? T of X star equals X star. And the third part says X star is the unique fixed point of T. Okay, there is no other fixed point of T in the set capital X. Oh, by the way, there should also be a qualification that this should be for all X1, 
x2 in capital X. Okay. So, if you look at the previous uh, iterations that we have written here, x k plus 1 and lambda k plus 1 was equals to x k lambda k minus plus alpha minus gradient of x l right so i'm going to define t of alpha of x as well this let let me write it as y because this is y is equal to x and lambda stacked together y plus alpha okay and y is x and lambda Okay, so that's my, this is my map T of alpha. And what I want to show is that this map, if this map is a contraction map, all I have to show is that this map is a contraction map over Y. And if I can show that, I'm guaranteed that it'll converge to X star lambda star. T of X star lambda star will be equal to X star lambda star, which is essentially the local minimum for the original problem and then x star is a unique fixed point of t okay so there's no other local minimum in that vicinity in that closed set but before we do that let's prove this theorem okay it's not very difficult to actually prove it uh, by the way banak was a self taught mathematician okay he didn't have a formal training in mathematics uh, but he was a great mathematician in the early early 20th century. I think he was active around 1900 or 1890s to 1930s or 40s. Okay. So let's get, let's prove this. So my claim one is that XK is a Cauchy sequence Okay, and what's a Cauchy sequence? Well, we'll see what Cauchy sequence is. It essentially means that, uh, let's, let's see what a Cauchy sequence is. So, I want to compute xk minus xk plus n. Okay, so what do I have? This is less than equal to xk minus xk plus 1, xk plus 1 minus xk plus 2, xk plus n minus xk plus n minus 1. Okay. What is this equal to? So, why is this true? Well, triangle inequality. Okay, this is true by triangle inequality. So, that's good. The first step was easy. The second step, I'm going to recognize that xk is well t of xk minus 1 minus t of xk. Okay. 
And what is t of xk plus n minus 2? Well, you can write it as t raised to n minus 1 of xk minus 1 minus t of t raised to n n minus 1 t raise x of k. Okay, all this remains the same. These terms remain the same. Okay, and I'm going to just write x k plus n minus two as t raised to n minus one x k minus one minus t raised to n minus one x k. Any question so far? Remember, when I define xk plus 1 equals t of xk, it's the same as saying, well, it's equal to t raised to k x1, or t raised to k plus 1 x0. Okay, so t applied k plus 1 times on x0. So that's, that's the idea I am using here. Now, what is this less than equal to? So, well, I know that t of x k minus 1 minus t of x k is less than alpha x k minus 1 <coughs> minus x k alpha raised to n minus 1 x k minus 1 minus x k. Okay? where I use the fact that well T is a contraction map. So we have this, we have this, uh, this uh, result by assumption. So I'm using the fact that T is a contraction here. Okay, so now I have alpha plus alpha square plus alpha cube all the way up to alpha n minus 1 multiplied by xk minus 1 minus xk. So what do I have? I can collect all those terms together to prove the following statement. So I have xk minus xk plus n is less than equal to alpha minus alpha raised to n over 1 minus alpha xk minus 1 minus xk, okay? Uh, this is clear to everyone. So what is alpha plus alpha square plus alpha raised to n minus 1. This is alpha minus alpha raised to n over 1 minus alpha. Okay, geometric series. So I got this result. Now I can write this as the so next, next, next in line is xk minus 1 minus xk can be written as t raised to k minus 1 x0 minus t raised to k minus 1 x1 and that's less than equal to alpha raised to k minus 1 x0 minus x1. Okay, questions? Third equality here. Yeah. So these terms, this term will remain the same. For every subsequent term, I am going to write t of x, x of k plus n minus 2, I can write it as t raised to uh, n minus 
I can write this as t raised to n minus 1 x of k minus 1. How? Okay. Let's do that. x1 equals tx0. Okay. x2 equals tx1 equals t square x0. Okay. Keep going. Keep going forward and you can prove this, this result. Okay. Everything clear so far? So let's substitute this part here in this expression. So I have xk minus xk plus n is less than equal to alpha raised to k 1 minus alpha raised to n minus 1 over 1 minus alpha x1 minus x naught. Okay. And this is less than equal to alpha raised to k over 1 minus alpha x1 minus x naught. Why? I have just taken n going to infinity, so this term goes to 0. So this side becomes independent of n. Okay. I made this side independent of n, whereas this term is xk minus xk plus n. Okay. So what is this? This is the two points in the tail of the sequence. Okay. So I have the sequence as k, and this is my xk. Okay, so I look at the tail of the sequence. I take any two points in the tail of the sequence. I take the norm of the difference. And it turns out to be a small number multiplied by some constant. Okay, and this number alpha k goes to 0 as k goes to infinity. Which means as you pick the threshold of this tail, as you pick it closer and closer to infinity, the difference between any two points in the sequence in the tail is going to go become arbitrarily small. Okay, that's what Cauchy sequence is. So you have limit k goes to infinity, xk minus xk plus n is equal to zero for all n greater than or equal to 0. Right? This is the definition of a Cauchy sequence. xk is a Cauchy sequence. If you take any two points in the tail of the sequence, you take the difference, you take the norm of the difference, right? and you let that k go to infinity, it's equal to 0. So this is the definition of Cauchy sequence. So claim one is proved. Any question? No? Okay. So claim two, xk converges to x star. And this is from convergence of Cauchy sequence. Sequences in Rn. So it turns out that every Cauchy sequence in Rn will converge. Okay, this is a well-known result in mathematics. So I use that result to show that well, xk is going to converge to some value x star. Okay, um, that's the property of Rn. Uh, and if you take advanced mathematics class, you will prove this result. 
Okay, but here we are just going to borrow that result from that particular class. Okay, so x k will converge to some point within R n. Okay, and since x capital X was a closed set to begin with, this x star will also lie in x. So, claim three. Since x is closed, I do we need convexity? I guess we don't need convexity. Since x is closed, x star will lie in the set itself. Okay, so that's good. Then claim four. Consider x k plus one equals t of x k. I know that t is continuous, so I can take the limit on both the side. So this would imply limit k goes to infinity. X k plus one equals limit k goes to infinity. T of x k, which implies that x star equals t of x star. Okay, so we prove the second part of the result. And now we need to prove the uniqueness part. Any questions so far? Okay, so we started. So we started with a contraction map and a closed set. We generated a sequence from that contraction map. Okay, then we proved that well that sequence seems to be a Cauchy sequence because it satisfies this condition. Okay, so if I take limit k going to infinity, norm of x k minus x k plus n. These are any two points in the tail of the sequence. If I take the difference, if I take the norm of the difference. It's equal to zero as I take k going to infinity. So we prove that it's a Cauchy sequence. Then I used a result from real analysis, which said that well, every Cauchy sequence in R n is supposed to converge. So it converges to some point x star. Since x is closed, x star will be in the set x itself. So that's good. We get a point in the set itself. Now then I proved that you know what? It turns out that x star. Is equal to t of x star, so x star is a fixed point of t. Okay, so that's good. Now I need to prove that x star is the unique point in the set x at which the sequence will converge. What is the what is the important part? What is the important? Uh, wh why is this fact important? Let's say this is my set x, and I started from this initial condition. Let's say I converge to this is my x star. Okay, if I start from here, then also I will converge to the same x star. If I started from here, then also I will converge to the same x star. So no matter where in the set I start from, I'll always converge to the same fixed point of t in the set itself. Okay, so x star is going to be. So that's why x star being unique is important. So let's uh, prove that that x star is unique. So claim five x star is unique. How do I prove that? Let's say x one star and x two star are such that t of x one star equals x one star, t of x two star equals x two star. So these are two fixed points of t in the set itself, in the set capital X. So what do I have? T of x1 star minus t of x2 star norm is less than equal to alpha x1 star minus 
x2 star. And what is T of x1 star? Well, it's x1 star minus x2 star is less than or equal to alpha x1 star minus x2 star. And remember, alpha is strictly less than 1. What does this imply? I have a number, a positive number or a non-negative number which is less than some multiple of that number where that multiple is strictly less than 1. Okay, So this implies norm of x1 star minus x2 star is equal to 0. Okay, Only then can it happen that this number is less than or equal to something which is less than 1 multiplied by the number. Okay, So that's my favorite Banach contraction mapping theorem. Yes? So this x star would be the optimal point? Right? In optimization, yes, it will turn out to be the optimal point. Yeah. Right. right. And when we start from different x naughts, we can converge to different optimal point. point. Yeah. So how does uniqueness of this very good point. Okay, so when you come up with this map, T alpha of Y, let me erase some things. So let's say this is your space, original space. This is one x in this is one part of the set x1. So remember this is your entire set x itself. So there is a region of attraction. So let's say this is your x1 star. This is your x2, x2 star. So then you will have another region of attraction. Okay, And same thing here, you will have x3 star. And you will have another region of attraction and so on. Okay. So the region of attraction will be different. And let's say you started from here, you will converge to this x2 star, then you started with some another initial condition, you will converge to this x3 star. But if you started from this initial condition and this initial condition, you would always converge to x3 star. You will never converge to x2 star. How are we deciding the region of attraction on this end? Let's, let's see this in a picture. Okay, Very simple. picture which is let's say this is your function okay and your this is a gradient descent okay so t of t of x equals x minus alpha gradient of f of x okay your this region will be x1 and then this region will be your x2 and so on. And no matter where you start within this x2, you will always converge to this point. No matter where you start in this x1, you will always converge to this point. Okay, So that's, that's how you decide what the region of convergence is going to be. Okay. Yes. Sorry, if you? Right. But the T will not be a contraction over the entire set. Oh. Okay. So you can only prove that T is a contraction in X1, and you can only prove that T is a contraction in X2. But you can't prove that T is a contraction in X1 union X2 even though it is a closed set. Okay? Yes? Right. So you, in many optimization problems, when you go about proving the result, 
you prove it in the neighborhood of x2 star so you don't actually explicitly mention that this is the region of convergence explicitly okay you just say that if you start close to x star you will converge to x star that's what you say okay uh, in many other problems well i shouldn't say many other problems in some problems you can actually say concretely what the region of convergence is but in general it is hard to say what the region of convergence is okay but for some problems you may be able to but the best problems are convex problems because then the region of convergence is the entire rn okay so you can say no matter where in rn you start from you will always converge to the optimal value and the reason is this map is a contraction for sufficiently small values of alpha this map is a contraction map and therefore it will converge to the optimal point okay so with this specific theorem banach contraction mapping theorem you can prove the convergence of gradient descent newton's method uh uh most of these uh, uh convex optimization methods that we have studied so far uh augmented lagrangian method and so on no matter which algorithm you pick you can prove that the algorithm will converge to the fixed point of t in the limit okay and the hope is the fixed point of t is same as the optimal point of the original problem okay which is the case for instance in the gradient descent what is the fixed point when is tx equal to x when gradient of fx equal to 0 which is the stationary point which is what the optimal point satisfies okay so if you start close to the optimal point you apply the gradient descent the steepest descent as long as alpha is sufficiently small you will converge to the fixed point of t and the fixed point of t is a stationary point of this original function f which happens to be the local minimum of the function f okay so that's the train of thought we will explore it uh in the next class and we will we'll go back to the problem we started with right we came up with this iteration xk plus 1 equals to something lambda k plus 1 equals something and we want to prove that that iteration is going to converge to the optimal point or not we'll use the banach contraction mapping theorem to show that yes indeed it will converge to the optimal point okay all right see you guys in the next class